Hi guys, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am here with my co-host, Jamie Hampton. We're super excited about today's episode, and we're going to be talking about does God still speak to us through dreams, and how do we know if he does? So thanks again for joining us, and we're going to open with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you that you are a God that reaches out to us. Lord, you speak to us through your word. You speak to us um, just through others. You speak to us in so many ways. And we just pray that this discussion today would just open our eyes and our minds to every possible way that you might be speaking to us. We do pray that your spirit of truth would be here with us, Lord, that we would not go outside of, of anything scriptural or theological, but just have an honest discussion about what could be and, um, and talk about how we can recognize your voice in any way. In Jesus' name, amen. So our verse of the day comes from Acts 12, 17, and it says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So I guess that kind of just answers our question. Only young men, only old men will be spoken to by God <laughs> through dream. The Do end. you know what? I need to interrupt because as soon as I saw this verse, I had this hilarious story. So before I became a mom, I worked part-time in an assisted living home. And there was this old lady there who was very sweet. She had lived her whole life as a pastor's wife. And she, um, I was on the dementia ward. And so, you know, sometimes people would just, you know, they just say what pops into their head. No filter. <laughs> so I'm getting her ready for the day. And she says, you know, it says that the sons and daughters will prophesy. And it says that the old men will see visions and have dreams, but it doesn't say what happens to the old women. <laughs> so cute. Like this is like, I think she had just woken up. So it was kind of like, she woke up worried about this, you know, like, what about me? I'm just so impressed that she knew that scripture. I mean, that just shows you what's important to her, you know, that she held on to scripture. Yeah, yeah. It was really, really cute. And fun. Aww. So, okay. Now, now that we've gotten that fun story out of the way, go ahead and tell us why we picked this verse. Um, we just, I think, picked this to just show that, um, I mean, a lot of people theologically would debate when the last days are, but there have been times in the past and there will be times in the future that... God will pour out his spirit and speak in different ways, prophecy, visions, dreams. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about how God speaks. Does he still speak to us through dreams? And how can we tell if he does or if it's just, you know, late night pizza? Or what's, um, what's Scrooge say? A, a bit of gravy or, <laughs> you know, that whole thing? <laughs> yes, I can't remember the words, but yeah. I can't either. I can hear it in Michael Caine's voice from the yes. Muppets Christmas Carol, though. Um, you know, and I guess before we dive in, we should go ahead and say, like, so many other things in praying Christian women. We really do take a fairly central viewpoint on this. So we're not about to stand up here and say that, you know, God never speaks to anybody at all. And we're also not going to say that every single thing that you dream is is a direct message from God telling you exactly what you have to do. I think, you know, the question of does God still speak to us through dreams? I think the very simple answer is, well, he could, <laughs> you know, and so I didn't want anybody um, to get worried that we're going to go, you know, way one extreme or way the other extreme. <laughs> Like I said, we're, we're pretty centrist in a lot of stuff here on the show. And even when we aren't, we try to keep the show centrist just so that we're, uh, <laughs> just so that we're wishy-washy. Is that why we're doing it? No, yeah, we won't reveal our, our, our weird <laughs> side to you here in public. I think, you know, I think people know our weird side by now. But anyway, <laughs> just for fun, in case you haven't heard our weird side yet, our just for fun is going to reveal that. What's the strangest dream you've ever had? It was actually terrifying. Oh no. Okay. So I, I have a friend that had given me some, or I guess I had bought it. It's like this, um, it's Arcazon. It's from, it's, it's like a bark, slippery elm bark. It's like a natural thing that you're supposed to take for like boosting your immune system or if you're sick. Like a pill or tea? It's, or it's liquid. It's like a oh, concentrated okay. liquid. Mm -hmm. So I was sicker than I've ever been in my life and um, just with the flu or something. 
and I couldn't eat very much. And I thought, well, I'm going to take some of this Arcazon stuff, which I didn't take it regularly, but like I had heard, you can take it, you know, kind of like emergency or something, mm-hmm. it'll boost your immune system. And it was horrible tasting, but I took it and I took the full amount on a totally empty stomach and sick body. Oh, no. And then I went to sleep and I had the weirdest like hallucinogenic <laughs> dreams. Oh no. It was very weird. And so the weirdest part was I felt like I was awake and like my husband had leaned over and covered my face with his hand like like he was trying oh, no. to and then, you know, and and I thought it was real and I was like, what is going on? And then I woke up and I was lying on my back and my husband was snoring peacefully. Oh, it was the weirdest thing. So I'd say that was the other weird dreams that I had had to do with taking anti-malarial medication in oh, uh-huh. Larium gave me some very strange dreams, kind of like in the same vein. Interesting. I had the weirdest dreams when I was pregnant for the first time. Yeah. Um, like one of my dreams, my husband and I had just watched Lord of the Rings and I had this dream that my son was born, but he was an orc and I got really freaked out <laughs> oh, no. and my mom was there in the delivery room. So I'm like screaming, what do I do? What do I do? And she said, well, try nursing him. And so I oh. nursed this orc and it turned into like this just adorable, fat, chubby Gerber baby. <laughs> that is, that is bizarre. That was very bizarre. That is bizarre. <laughs> Um, one more in the just for fun. What are some things that commonly recur in your dreams? Like, do you have any common themes or settings or anything that you dream about regularly? And what does that yes. say about you? Yes. As soon as I read this, I was like, oh man, I dream about bears and sharks. Huh. And so I have lots of dreams about bears and being in Alaska, I think that's when that started, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then, and sharks have always been there and, um, just sea creatures and just like fearful dreams. Like I'm in the water, I'm trying to save my kids from the sharks or I'm, you know, walking through a house and there's this crazy bear, like walking through the house, like a dog, only it's normal for everybody else, but me, things like that. Like I have these bear and shark dreams. So I'm sure that it says to me that I have a degree of concern for my kids or just right. like, there are things that are looming, you know, in the background mm-hmm. that I feel like, you know, things I need to conquer. I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. But I have some very happy dreams too, just as a disclaimer. I, in general, I don't <laughs> have a lot of nightmares where I wake up terrified. I usually uh, have pretty pleasant dreams. Well, that's good. Yeah. I have been dreaming a ton lately, like almost every single night about my grandparents and particularly about their home. Did I mention this to you before? No. Like this has been ongoing for months. And I think it's because in 2018, we moved twice Mm -hmm. and like grandma and grandpa's home, they still live there. It's the only like the only place I remember from my childhood, you know, that like every once in a while I still do go back to. So yeah, I dream about their house almost nightly. It's very, very strange. Wow, that is. Yeah. But um, kind of like you and the bears or the sharks, when I feel kind of overwhelmed or like things are out of control, to me that shows up in my dreams is like ocean waves that are going to crash over me or that do crash over me. Mm-hmm. Um and just this sense of, yeah, very much the sense of feeling overwhelmed and out of control of life and mm-hmm. stuff. So, you know, I feel like this would be a good time. So um, one of my answers of, you know, this whole thing about prayer and dreams and the Holy Spirit and God speaking to us, one of my things is, yeah, sometimes God definitely can speak to you through dreams. And other times I feel like, you know, even if it's not that God has specifically downloaded your dream content into your brain which like I said, he could do. I feel like dreams can be helpful if in the sense that they just kind of reveal to you what's going on in your mind. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I don't even realize that I'm anxious about things until I have one of these overwhelming ocean dreams. And then I could say, oh yeah, I guess I am feeling like life is getting a little out of control. Maybe I can pray about the things that are leading me to be afraid of that, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, I think so. So I would say like, even if your dreams are not direct communication from God, they can definitely be things that you could pray about to God, you know, or every once in a while I've had just the most bizarre dream and I'll be like, okay, God, you know, what's this about? And it's not like I'm asking for some kind of prophetic revelation. Like really, I just kind of want to decipher what's going on in my subconscious. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, sometimes 
um, I can't think of examples, but like every once in a while, I've just had the most bizarre, random, where in the world did that come from dream? Why would I even be thinking about that? And then I can pray about it yes. and then realize, oh, that makes total sense that because I've been thinking about this, that, or the other thing that I would have a dream about this. So let's keep it biblical though. Do you want to just give us a quick, quick survey of all of biblical history? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, uh, maybe just where in the Bible do we see do we see dreams coming up other than that verse that um, I know that verse is in Acts. Is it first in Hosea? I forget exactly where the I will I'm pour sure. out my spirit. I don't know. I would have to go back and cross yeah. reference that. But yeah, I think it is probably a quote. And um, but yeah, I mean Joseph in the Old Testament, how he was a dream interpreter. Wait, he had. He did both. He had dreams. That's yeah. right. He had dreams. He had dreams and, and he interpreted. He also was an interpreter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, New Testament Joseph had dreams. God spoke to him through dreams about Jesus or dream about Jesus. And, you know, and then also again, warning him to flee to Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, Paul had dreams. Um, was Jacob's ladder a dream or a vision? I think people could make an argument for both. And so, you know, you know, dreams and visions kind of go together, you know, a little bit good. dreams mm -hmm. and, um, what else can you think of any other ones? Well, you know, speaking about dreams and visions, you have Peter kind of when he had that trance and saw all the That's food, right. I mean, that feels very dreamlike, even yeah. though it says specifically that he was, um, you know, asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, in so. Revelation, I mean, all of Revelation was a vision of some sort. Right, right. And that's, you know, was that physically happening? Like, was he physically gone from the island or was that all in the spirit? You know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And then I know a couple other times, like Daniel interpreted some dreams for the king in a similar way that Joseph did. When so of, um, Samuel hearing God's voice calling his name mm -hmm, while he was mm -hmm. sleeping, that was more of an awakening by God, right. but mm -hmm. something similar. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely see this in the yeah, Bible, old and new. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how about you, Jamie? Has God ever, like, I guess, what's the most direct that you feel God's ever spoken to in a dream, if He ever has? I've had as we went through, because you know, I think you have a really good list of how God might speak in dreams, and so I have uh, several things that came to mind when we were. Um, going through that i would say one of the one of the ways that god spoke to me was um i was on a field trip in college um and i had this dream about a friend that was a good friend in high school and it was just it was a dream about her being pregnant and needing to talk and i woke up and was like that's just it just something about it i mean i thought about her a lot anyway but that dream, something about it made me think, I need to call her as soon as I get home. And so I got home and there was a message on the answering machine from her. Or maybe my friend had written down, maybe my roommate had written down a message from her. And mm -hmm. when I called her, she was pregnant. And that was mm. the most like, wow. I mean, I, I don't know why God would warn me about the hat that I needed to, you know, because she left a message. I would have called her anyway, but I just, I did think to pray for her. And so that was an interesting um, and she did need encouragement. You know, yeah. We talked together and yeah, that was that's neat. kind of, an, that's really the only thing like that, that was that direct. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, you know, I think like, like you will kind of get through some of them in here, but you know, your story reminded me, I actually had a dream the night before nine 11. So I was in college at the time and it was a half a dream, but it was half actually happening because there were a lot there. It was really loud right outside my door, which happens when you're in the dorm. But basically, I was hearing people going up the stairs or down the stairs of my dorm loudly. And there was um, a street light shining in the window that felt really bright. But my brain, like in my sleep, registered that as people trying to stampede to get away from a fire. Mm. And then you know, the next morning is when 9-11 happened. And so for me, that was just kind of a, huh, <laughs> kind of like with your friend, you know, yeah. like, 
I would have, you would have found out that she was pregnant within a few hours because she was going to call and, you know, like, <laughs> but you heard it a little bit early. It, it sort of felt like that. And no, I, could, I didn't wake up that morning telling myself, wow, there's going to be a terrorist attack today. Yeah. But I was reminded, you know, just of the sound because in my dream, there was fear, fire and stampeding down the stairs, you know, yeah. and which... Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's just dig into our list because we made a list to prepare for this episode of just ways that God might speak to us through dreams. And again, we're going to really heavily emphasize the might. Um, it could very well have happened that I would have had that exact same dream, even if it wasn't the night before 9-11, because there was a light shining in my window and there were loud people going up and down the stairs, you know? Yeah. So, um, Sometimes God might tell the future. I feel like when people think about God talking to them in dreams, I feel like this is maybe where most people's mind goes. Yeah, I think so. Thinking that God would foretell a future event because, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the times that dreams were interpreted in the Bible, the, it was to say, hey, there's going to be a famine or, hey, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, I, certainly feel like God could tell you the future in a dream. Um, this wasn't a dream. This would fall more under the vision kind of thing. But to me, it was, it was kind of like a very vivid daydream. Mm -hmm. And it was just a few days before Silas's first Christmas. And he was very, very sick. And we were worried that we were going to be back at the hospital over Christmas, which we ended up being. And it was... I was just jumping in the shower. I was super exhausted. I was worried about my son. And I had this picture of him as an adult, totally healed of everything the doctor thought might eventually become wrong with him. And he was giving his testimony like a motivational speaker. And he said he was talking to this group of kids and teens. And he was saying, like, everyone gave up on me. They said I wouldn't be anything more than a vegetable, but my mom believed in me and that's why I'm here. Wow. And, you know, like, and it was, like I said, it was vivid. It wasn't a dream that I had in my sleep, but it was, you know, like a, a vivid daydream. And I didn't take it as a promise from God at that point that it was going to happen exactly that way. I just took it as a very heavy dose of encouragement to, you know, not grow weary and to just keep on doing what I needed to do to take care of my son, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes our dreams could also be God's way of telling us to pray for somebody. Do you have any examples of that? Yeah, well, not for myself necessarily. There are a couple of, I think there are a couple of times where people have been put on my heart, not necessarily in dreams, but I have a friend that says that she is often woken up at like three in the morning and it's usually about the same time. And she just knows now it took her a while to figure it out, but she just knows now to say, okay, God, who do you want me to pray for? Or what do you need me to pray for? And so that becomes her prayer time. And she actually asked God, like, just if you have something for me to, to pray, wake me up. And, and she does. And she has these amazing stories of praying for things and then calling the person the next day that she's been praying for and just God confirming that they needed that prayer. And, and I think she has mm -hmm. been given insight into, so that's kind of not having a dream, but being woken from sleep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. Well, I had a friend have a dream about me that made total sense and she didn't know it. So we had just moved and my husband had just taken on, he had been a youth pastor for basically our whole marriage, but this was the first time he was a senior pastor full time at a church. And it was a small rural church and they didn't have anybody to lead music. And so that kind of fell on me. And if this had been like 10 years ago, I probably would have been all over that. But I went through um, several really long bouts of laryngitis when I was pregnant with our third son and never really recovered my singing voice. So I felt very unprepared to lead singing. And I have a friend and it, it's, it's not like Jamie and I were, even after I moved away and we weren't living in the same town, like we would still talk probably once a week, you know, at least, yeah. um, you know, this, this friend and I, you know, we went months without talking. It wasn't because we 
hated each other. We just, you know, when you move and life goes on and she's doing her thing and we're doing our thing. But this is probably, it had been six or nine months since we had had any kind of communication. And she sent me a text. I, said, I just had the weirdest dream about you. I dreamed that you were like singing at your church and I didn't even know that you were a singer and you were really worried about this and that. And so I had to tell her, <laughs> you're like, okay, this is exactly what's going on. And so that was, it was encouraging for me. I think in a way it was God's way of telling me, Hey, I've got people praying for you. You don't feel ready for this, but don't worry, you know, like I'm, I'm calling up people to be praying for you. So yeah, sometimes if you have just a weird random dream about someone else, maybe that is God's way of telling you to pray for them. So I have a friend who recently let me know that she had a dream about my daughter becoming a dog musher only with um, wild boars. Oh my goodness. What does that say about your daughter? <laughs> I just, I it just popped into my head and I'm like, maybe I should delve into this more. <laughs> Yikes. No, that was just funny. But yeah, definitely let people know because it really could be, it could be just nothing. But at the very least, you could just say, hey, I had a dream and you were in it. Even if it's weird, just, say, you know, I had a dream. Oh yeah, it's a fun way to reconnect with people. for you, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like God can give us warnings in dreams. Like that's what he did with Joseph, the father of Jesus. You know, like Herod's going to go looking for this kid. You guys need to get get yourselves to Egypt. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes dreams can be warnings. Do you have any examples of that? Well, I have kind of an opposite thing. So I had this just random dream about, I don't know, several months ago um, that I had a lump in my breast and there was really no reason for it. I hadn't been thinking about mammograms or anything. I mean, it was around the time of year when I would go for one, but I hadn't even been thinking about it. And so I had this dream that I had this lump in my breast and I woke up and I just was like, eh, whatever. And I did a self-exam in the shower and mm -hmm. there was a lump in my breast. Yeah. So that was, I, I pretty much assumed God is saving me from dying. Basically, that's kind right. of what I thought. Um, but it turns out so far, it seems benign. The one that I actually, I, they found several when they did the investigation and the one that I could feel, I can't feel anymore. They ended mm -hmm. up with this and I still have to follow up sooner than a year. But up until now, I, it still looks like it was not a warning that it was just nothing, but who knows? Maybe I'm right. being monitored more closely because there is something to worry about. But yeah, but so that's, I guess, just to say, Sometimes we do just have dreams that seem really poignant and significant mm -hmm. and symbolic and it might not be from God or maybe that dream was from God. And I, I do know that the process that that whole kind of health scare took me through mm -hmm. ended up being a real um, redeeming process for me in terms of health anxiety and trusting God. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it had to do with the redemption. God had to take me through that fear and relying on him to make me realize that I could still rely on him. I don't know, but whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't know if that dream was from God or if it was just my head, but. Well, you know, it's funny you say just your head, but it also could have been that your body knew that there was something in your breast that wasn't supposed to be there. That Do you know what I mean? No, like there is so true. much going on in the yeah. subconscious mm -hmm. that we don't know about that really is science, you know, like it, it sounds like magic or God or something, but it, it truly is science. No, that's so it, very it possible. It could have even been, you know, just your, your brain telling you, Hey, there's something in my body. Don't know what's going on. Yeah, no, that's a really good point too. And like, have you ever had a dream of our brain? Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, awesome. like, I had this really vivid dream when I was a kid that someone shot me in the leg and I woke up and my whole leg was asleep. And so, you know, it's, it's like, you know, my leg was hurting. And so my brain worked that into my dream. Yeah. And so, you know, again, we're certainly not discounting the fact that God is amazingly divine, but we also have talked about it a lot before, just the connection between the physical, the spiritual, the mental. So, yeah, but going back to warnings, this was um, a very, very interesting dream I had. 
this was one of the ones where it was just so weird and random that I had to just pray and be like, God, what in the world? Like, where did that come from? And I wasn't at that point saying, God, what are you trying to say to me? I really was just wondering, why is my brain coming up with this? Mm -hmm. But I absolutely believe that in this case, God did have a warning for me. So the short version of the dream had to do with my son Silas getting, um, acupuncture, which I've never done and he's never done, but he had a therapist in my dream giving him acupuncture, but it was right under the fingernails and it was super painful for him. Oh my goodness. And he was just going along with it. And in my dream, I told him like, if this hurts, you're not supposed to do it, but he didn't know that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, because he did have so much invasive medical stuff going on when he was young, like he's the kind who would just put up with that poor guy. Mm -hmm. And So again, I woke up, it really creeped me out because the thought of having anything under your fingernails is gross. And also, you know, like how sad that my son just kind of accepted that when he wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, I asked God, I'm like, what in the world is going on in my brain that would make me think of this? And it turned into a warning regarding somebody who was involved in his therapy at the time. And I realized that if we went to... Um, make this more sciencey and less diviney. <laughs> I would say I didn't realize it until I had this dream and prayed about it that I was not a hundred percent comfortable with the care my get, my son was getting through this person. If we went to go on the other side, it was God telling me that this person was not beneficial to be involved in my son's care to the degree that they were. And it turns out, you know, and so then I'm like, okay, God, what do I do with this information? I'm not the kind of person to make waves, especially if all I have to say is, yeah, I had a dream and I didn't like it. So (laughs) I'm firing you. (laughs) But it turns out like just the next week due to schedule changes and stuff, this person was kind of out of his day to day care anyway. And so, yeah, just super, super interesting. One of the only times I can think of where I I really do feel like God was giving me a warning. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Well, and another, another way that God could possibly speak to us through dreams is closure is one thing that you came up with in this Mm -hmm. list, Alana. And, you know, my mom, um, passed away almost seven years ago. Wow. Um, and she, okay, sorry, I was calculating. Anyway, (laughs) she had dementia. And so my dreams about my mom were always, while she was sick and alive, I always had dreams about her being confused, needing my help. Um, Mm -hmm. It was very much like, you know, sometimes she was less confused than in real life, but she was always confused. But for some reason, um, and I actually prayed to God, I said, God, will you give me a dream about my mom? Because after she passed away, it just, to me, I wanted that comfort of mm-hmm. being with her virtually, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. I know it's kind of weird, but it's like, you know, and not long after that, I had a dream about her, but she wasn't confused. She was normal. This is after she died. So ever since she's passed away, all of my dreams about her, she's restored. Uh-huh. I take that as comfort that she is restored. She's whole now and she's not confused anymore. She's with That me. is so neat. Yeah. So that definitely brought closure. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I am more than happy demystifying this, you know, like sure. I feel like many people would be uncomfortable if they thought that you were saying, so God, let me talk to my mother and she's no, fine. No, no, but yeah, he knew that your brain and you're just kind of emotional well-being needed to kind of get that picture of her, you know, right. and that's and really, not really that cool. I wanted to like, you know, interact Reach out beyond the grave. Level. Yeah, that wasn't it. Just I mm-hmm. wanted, you know, a dream about her. And so, yeah, yeah but I, I had a similar dream. So it wasn't somebody who died, but it was somebody who through a really long, complicated series of events just was really close and then was out of my life kind of permanently, um, maybe sounds more dramatic than it is. It's just kind of a long story, but I ended up having a dream where we were at the airport and I was saying like, I've got to go, I'm sorry. And she said, it's okay. I understand. And we hugged and that was it. And so it was kind of like my, my brain and or God giving me the goodbye that we didn't ever get to really have. Yeah. And, and sometimes just that sense of resolution is really, really 
beneficial and healing. Well, and I feel like especially when you're talking about, you know, biblical reconciliation, which, you know, to forgive someone or ask forgiveness Mm -hmm. and to do your part, you know, and do right biblically and by God. Um, If you're in a situation like that, I could see God using that a dream if you don't receive the acceptance of that forgiveness Mm -hmm. or if you Mm -hmm. forgive someone even when they haven't even asked for your forgiveness, something like that. Like I could see God using something like that to also bring closure Uh in that kind of situation if you're feeling unsettled about it. Yeah, that's a neat one. So um, any other just kind of like kinds of dreams or ways God can talk to you in dreams you want to touch on or do you want to move on to some of our deep probing questions about how all this works. Yeah, we can move on to our questions. Okay. So I love this. I don't remember if I came up with the wording or if you came up with the wording. How do you know if this is God or just late night pizza talking <laughs> to you? <laughs> yes. And, you know, kind of like we've said, you don't always know mm-hmm. other than the fact that God is sovereign. He's in everything. Yeah. So it's and sometimes it probably doesn't really matter. Do you know right. what I mean? Does it matter? Yeah. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in, yeah, whether it came from my own subconscious, whether it was God speaking to me, it can, it has the same impact regardless, whether that's telling me to pray for somebody, to warn me about something, you know, to encourage you. Um, yeah. So what about symbols and dreams? I have, so I actually, I have very, very vivid dreams. I can remember my dreams just about every morning, as long as I like, don't, jump out of bed and do something else right away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just amusing because they really are weird. (laughs) And I don't all, you know, I rarely put as much stock into them as I have about some of these, you know, specific dreams I've talked about most of the times like, wow, that was a weird dream. And that's the, you know, degree I think about it, but I'll post my weird, you know, bizarre dreams on Facebook. And every once in a while, someone will be like, Oh, well, if you dream about fish, that means this. (laughs) And if you dream about bread, you're thinking about this. What are your thoughts about that? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about it. Cause, you know, I feel like that could definitely get into divination or like, you know, if you Good get point. deep into that, into symbology, it could almost become a superstition or like a religion or, or, you know, omens, that sort of thing. It could. But mm-hmm. in the general sense, you know, I'm sure that maybe there are psychologists, like I do know that psychologists in general will say if you are, um, I have nothing to back this statistic up with, but right. mm-hmm. I'm just, I have heard in general that psychologists will say, you know, if you dream about being chased or about, you know, mm-hmm. animals chasing you, like my bears and sharks, right. that it's, you know, a sign of anxiety or something that's, that's too big for you or waves, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there could be a scientific component to that that could be, you know, but I, I would be afraid to get too deep into that because I've been tempted. I'll, I'll tell you, I've been tempted to search when I've had mm-hmm. bizarre dreams because I'm like you, I remember mine. And yeah. I've been tempted to search online and I, a couple of times I have, you know, what does dreaming about such and such mean? And it takes me to some really not god glorified mm-hmm. sites. Yeah. Yeah. So I, would use, I would use caution at the same time. I think there are probably psychological um, truths. Reasons that, for some of it. For yeah. some of it. I'm sure there mm-hmm. really are. Absolutely. Um, like I dream a lot about ha- being a kid again and having a pet and being told that pet is my responsibility. And then I completely forget about that pet and find it dead. And I know that like, to me, that's when, yeah. Like I know that when I have that dream, it means that I have, I'm scared about all the responsibilities I have. I feel like I'm failing as a mom. I feel like, you know, I'm neglecting my duties. So sometimes it is, you know, or do you dream about your teeth falling out? Like I was just going to bring that up. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah. The teeth falling out or like for me, you know, I haven't looked it up, but I wouldn't be surprised because I know for me, that means like, I'm afraid that I'm not taking good enough care of myself. You know, like, again, I'm neglecting things like brushing my teeth, you know? So yeah, I, I think that was a really the, um, Going to school in nothing but your underwear. <laughs> Fear of exposure. Yes. Or worse, you know, like <laughs> underwear or less. Right. Yeah, right. Scary. Or my husband and I, we both have dreams where we're back in high school, but we're adults. 
Have you ever had that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm about to fail a test because I didn't realize I was still in high school. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, I feel like that was a great answer that sometimes, yeah, sometimes things really can mean things in dreams, but let's not go so overboard, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I actually had an experience recently that was just kind of crazy and it was um, a friend um, a person I met very recently told me about this dream that she was having and I knew a little bit about her background and what she was going through and as she she as she told me this dream I knew what it meant mm -hmm. like I've never had that happen before but it was almost like wow God's giving me the interpretation and I mean when I spoke to her about what it meant I said okay I prefaced it I don't like speaking for God because yeah. I know that I don't have a hundred percent track record, but I really felt like this means this and this and this. And again, you could take both sides. You could say, God told me that this represented this and this represented this. Or you could say, you know what, just knowing what you're going through, I have a feeling that these are what these things represent. It's pretty clear mm -hmm. to me that, that you've got, you know, that there's hope here and that your, your mind is telling you that, that these things are going to work together or you know, whatever. Oh, neat. So, but, um, but it was a real message of hope for her, and she was really in a dark place. So I do feel like it was from God. But again, not to the point where I would say, I'm a dream interpreter, and I have exactly. the gift of prophecy. I would never say that. Or, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a really wise balance. So speaking about being encouraged in your dream, I had this such a neat experience. So I don't know if you've had... I've had both sides of it, right? I've had dreams that I feel are very much demonic. And I've also had dreams where I really do feel like the Holy Spirit is absolutely right there. Mm -hmm. And this was just a very neat dream in what it symbolized to me and just a picture that I've gone back to before for encouragement. So, you know how I mentioned I, I often dream about being like drowned by ocean waves. Mm -hmm. Like they're coming at me, they're knocking me over, like I'm drowning because I'm overwhelmed by life. And one dream, I was walking on top of ocean waves, and all the ocean waves had turned to glass. Oh, wow. And That's cool. Yeah. And I knew with each step, like the glass could break, and I could find myself drowning. But I also felt like God was giving me the courage to just keep walking, you know, like kind of like Peter getting out of the boat, except it was a little different because I wasn't on the water. Like the the waves had actually turned to glass. Oh, that's really neat. And it was just such a neat picture of, okay, yes, sometimes life does feel absolutely overwhelming, but sometimes God will calm the storm. Now, it wasn't like I was transformed or trans um, translated from this beach with these scary waves to a meadow. You know, the waves were still there. And again, I knew any minute that glass could disappear and I could be back in this, you know, drowning sensation. But that like with each step, I just felt this firm conviction of faith that everything was going to be okay. It was very encouraging. That is encouraging. I love that. Yeah. And I, I would just really see like that is from God. That is a, that mm -hmm. is a, from God. Yeah. So this is something, I don't know if we're going to be able to come up with an actual answer, but it's something that I feel um, at the very least is such an interesting thought question. <laughs> you know, if you sin in your dream, are you held accountable for those actions? Yeah. And that, that is a good question. Cause I mean, we've all been there where you've had a dream and you, well, you might and, have Jamie. I mean, I'm asking this hypothetically. Oh, hypothetically. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you totally set me up. No, but yeah, I, we've, I, I think everyone has been there to some extent where it's like, you know, thank goodness that was a dream yeah. <laughs> or you think, oh, well, it was just a dream, but was it? I mean, when right. Jesus talks about, mm -hmm. You know, if you lust after someone in your mind, it's the same after it's the same as committing adultery. Or mm -hmm. if you covet something that your neighbor has, it's as if you've stolen it. Or right. if you curse your brother, it's as if you've killed them. I mean, I think maybe it's just a reflection of our sinful nature, you know, and maybe not in and of itself a sin, like right. I have to go repent of this particular sin, but you know, maybe it reveals maybe, what's already there. Is that kind of what you mean? Maybe. Although there've been a couple that have come out of nowhere that I'm just like, I don't even, I didn't even know it was there. So maybe <laughs> that's the point. Maybe we do need to, you know, if maybe it's a warning type, like, 
wow, this is in me. If this is in me, then Mm -hmm. I need to think about that. And maybe there are some things to, uh, to talk to God about. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe I don't know the answer. You can treat it as, you know, you have a weird dream about someone else. Maybe all it is is God telling you to pray for that person. Maybe it's the same if, you know, you have one of those really out of the ballpark dreams where like, where did that come from? Maybe, you know, maybe it's just God telling you, okay, pray against this temptation or something. But I think often you're right. I think sometimes it can reveal sins or temptations that we're already struggling with. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think that we should feel like paralyzed with guilt for that kind of thing, but it can serve as a warning that, Hey, this is a temptation you're struggling with. So pray about it. Yeah, I think so too. And I think rather than looking at it as, you know, is that an individual sin? Like when I stole that pencil in my dream. (laughs) Oh, well, that's a, that's a very tame kind of sin in your dream. That's as bad as mine ever get. Oh, good. I'm glad. Me too. (laughs) Just kidding again. But yeah, if you steal a pencil in your dream rather than looking at that as, well, that was a sin because in my dream, I did Just thinking like we're all sinful and it's just a kind of a mirror held up to our sinful nature maybe. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to look at it. You know, I I wouldn't go overboard and reading a ton into it, but just treat it as, you know, one more thing you can pray for. I had this terrible, this was another one of those just super vivid daydreams about a very specific way in which one of my kids died. And thankfully, like they're way past the age they were in that dream. So I know that it didn't happen, but it was so vivid that I found myself just thinking maybe this is God's way of showing me what he protected me from, Mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like sometimes that might be you know, what those really weird, bizarre dreams might be, you know, maybe this is just a picture of who you would be if it weren't for the Lord. And so you could just say, thank you and move on. (laughs) No, that's, that's a really good point. That's, Mm -hmm. that's a really good way to look at it too. Yeah. Well, again, I'm so glad we got to talk about this topic. I feel like Jamie, this is a subject we've been wanting to talk about for a really, really long time. We've talked it over. We've had it in the episode possibilities yeah. for a while now. So it's yeah. It out so there. it was very neat to actually get to it. Um, and hopefully you guys listening were just encouraged by it again. I think if there's any takeaway, it's don't read too much into things, but be open to maybe God is either showing you what's already in your mind, or maybe he's prompting you to pray in a certain way or something like that. So before we move on, we want to tell you guys about a new way to help support our show. If you're finding these episodes encouraging, we have a Patreon page set up and for a monthly kind of donation, um, we could call it that, monthly subscription model, basically, you're going to get access to, do you remember how many episodes we have just to roll out, Jamie? They're like 83, I think. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Jamie and I worked on another prayer-related podcast before we launched Praying Christian Women, and we're taking all those episodes down now from public, but we're making them available to our friends on Patreon. And you get to choose your level of support. And so it's not going to break the bank. And it really encourages and helps us with just some of the costs of, you know, the website, the hosting, the tech side of things that we need to keep bringing you guys these podcasts. So you can sign up to support our show at patreon.com slash praying Christian women. And you're going to get access to all these extra audios. It's like, like Jamie said, over 80 episodes. Plus, I feel like we're going to be rolling out more things for our patrons as time goes on. So you will not run out of resources to help you in your prayer journey. So I think now uh, we'll just end with our blessing and our benediction. Sounds good. Okay. Our blessing today is, may God fill your heart today with the assurance of your salvation. May you rest whole and complete in the promise that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. May you know with certainty that your sins are forgiven on account of his name. May the hope of God's eternal kingdom fill you with joy and perseverance through whatever light and momentary trials you face this day. And our benediction is from 1 Timothy 6. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, 
who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen.